Tired of the everyday grind? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you Escape. Escape, designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. You are standing in a moonlit clearing somewhere in the Burmese jungle, the ruins of an ancient temple at your back, while gliding silently across the grass towards you, the knife in her hand held pointing at you, is the beautiful yet deadly high priestess of the cult you have profaned, the exotic girl who must now take your life. Listen now as Escape brings you Kathleen Height's story, Eye of Evil. I studied Fairchild as he read the letter. He was not a man I would ordinarily turn to for help, but I was not acquainted at Mandalay. Then, too, he knew Campbell. I mean no slur against Fairchild. He was bright enough as government office clerks go. I had simply hoped for more formidable assistance. This is the last letter you received from Campbell? Yeah, the last word of any sort until I cabled him to meet me in Mandalay. He cabled back that he would and named this hotel at noon today. Mm. Well, he's only two hours late. Two hours doesn't mean much in Burma. I'm not especially concerned about these two hours. Mm, the letter, eh? Yeah. Well, I can't say I blame you. Odd sort of letter. Doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Yeah, nor to me. Nor to anyone at the Historical Society. I hate to suggest this, but it sounds as if the old boy is cracked a bit, wouldn't you say? That's more or less what I've been sent to find out. Uh, this part here, he says, I shall fail if where I look my eyes see no beauty. Can't deny it has a certain ring to it. When was the last time you saw Campbell? Oh, let me see. It was well before the rain set in. I should say a good six or eight weeks before. That would make it late February or early March. Well, Campbell's letter was posted here in Mandalay the 14th of May. You're certain you didn't see him around that date? No, positive. Uh, of course, just because it was posted here doesn't mean Campbell himself was in Mandalay. Oh? Uh, probably sent it up here from Bougan by Mangba. Mangba? Uh, Burmese boy, devoted to Campbell. Oh. oh. Uh, it been all sorts of help to him with all that probing about he does around Pugan, ruddy ancient shrines and pagodas. The place is crawling with him, you know? Yes, yes, that's what I understand. Uh, Mungba does a lot of that sort of thing for Campbell. Aaron supplies, comes up the Irrawaddy by boat, you know? Uh -huh. There's no train down to Pugan from Mandalay. I don't suppose Campbell relishes the boat trip often. What was he like the last time you saw him? Seemed normal enough. We lunched here at the hotel, just as we're doing. From what you've said, that's about four months or so ago. I guess a lot could happen to a man in four months. It could in Pugan. Nothing but those miserable pagodas and shrines. I don't take much to ruins myself. You mean that, haven't you, Lawrence? No, no, no. This is my first trip to Burma. Oh. Well, then might I just give you a word about the people? All sorts, of course, but those around Pugan seem to be given to all manner of strange beliefs, superstitions, odd things. Well, the evil eye, for example. <laughs> you serious? Dead serious. Well, we can't be talking about the same thing. If I remember correctly, the archaic belief in the evil eye is that if one possesses it, anything or anyone he looks upon will die. Quite right. Only it isn't entirely archaic. It's a widespread belief in India, parts of Egypt, Arabia, and certainly here in Burma. Oh, that's fantastic. If I may, Loring, you're apt to find a great many things in Burma fantastic. Not so much in Mandalay, perhaps, or Rangoon, but around Kugan and to the west and north, there's a feeling, a mystic something that's been known to take hold of men... You're suggesting that Campbell... I don't know. You'd have to go there to find out. As Fairchild left me, something drew my attention across the room. 
she was alone. And quite possibly the most beautiful woman I have ever seen. Utterly, strikingly beautiful. And the look in her eyes was a compelling invitation. In no time at all, I accepted. You were a very long time. <laughs> Matter of seconds after I saw you. But you were a long time seeing me. I have been looking at you for almost an hour. Uh, not like that, you haven't. No, I'd have known. I wonder. Your face, a very nice face, has been clouded with concern. And so would mine have been with your luncheon companion. <laughs> he was a bit drab, wasn't he? I saw no reason for you to spend more time with him. Gina decided you should spend your time with her. Gina. I like that. And I like the name Stephen Loring. <laughs> How on earth could you know that? Either I have the gift of clairvoyance or I paid to look at the hotel register. Oh, well, in either case, I'm flattered. And because I haven't much time, I agree with Gina. I should spend what time I have with her. How much time? Today. Um, perhaps tonight. And tomorrow? Uh, no, no. Tomorrow I'm off to Pugan and uh, feeling a mystic something that's been known to take hold of men. You joke about Pugan. Oh, no, no, not really. I was quoting my drab friend. I've never been to Pugan myself. I do not think you would like it there. Oh? Pugan is very different. I should think you would find Mandalay much more to your taste. I should think I would, too. And China, knowing Mandalay was strange to me, wrote out instructions that would lead me to our rendezvous that night, and then she was gone. I found it difficult to believe our meeting had ever occurred, except that the memory of her was vivid and haunting. I lingered over a brandy and was preparing to leave the dining room. Greetings, Takin. Hmm? You are, I am certain, one Mr. Loring. Is everyone in Burma clairvoyant? No, Takin. I am pleased to be Mungba. Who? Mungba. Oh, Campbell's friend from Pugan. Well, where is he? Isn't he with you? Regrettably not with Mungba. Esteemed friend remains in Pugan. Asks that you understand and kindly to return to Pugan with Mungba. Oh. Well, is, is anything the matter with Campbell? To say again, esteemed friend remains in Pugan. Asks that you understand and kindly to return to Pugan with Mungba. No, no, I understand you all right. I, I'm inquiring about Campbell. Is he well? To say again, esteemed oh, friend no, all right, all remains... Right. No, no, I understand. I am to come with you to Pugan. Campbell is there. Good. <laughs> Good. To live now is to arrive at Pugan as the sun rises. Uh, no, not good. Not today. Tomorrow morning, when the sun lives again, we will go. Uh, to say again, to leave now... No, is... no, 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 never mind that. I, I said not today. You understand? Tomorrow morning, you and I go to Pugan. Not good. <laughs> Very good. Now, here... Can you lead me to this address or show me how to get there? See? Mm. To answer, Mungba is able to lead to this address. Ah, splendid. Then meet me here at the hotel at seven this evening. No, thank you, Takin. <laughs> no, now, what's all this about? To beg pardon, Takin. Though able, Mungba think not wise for one Mr. Loring to present himself at stated address. So, Mungba not lead him there. And he smiled and bowed and scurried off. It didn't matter. I knew that somehow I would find my way to Chino that night. When evening came, I left the hotel and began a bewildering tour of the countless bazaars. And by asking a direction here and a question there, I came finally to a dark cluster of buildings in a remote section of the Zegyo Bazaar. And there, at the proper door... I stopped. You are the most welcome one 
I'm Stephen Loring. Machina waits for you. Kindly enter. Thank you. Let's see. It's a bit dark in here, isn't it? The lights of a thousand candles are soon to come, Takim. One moment. I took a few steps on past the servant, and suddenly I felt a pair of arms around me. I struggled to free myself, and then a blinding pain flashed through me, and I felt myself sinking to the floor. Faintly, I heard the voices, and only one did I recognize, that of the little Burmese, Manba. Takin. Mm-hmm. Takin. China. To wake mm. from a dream, not always pleasing, Takin. Mm. Mangba. Mm. What happened? Not to remember, often rewarding. Uh, yeah. well, we're, we're on a boat. Soon to land at Pugan. Mangba, last night, you, you followed me. You saved my life. No trouble to serve friend of esteemed friend. Oh, yeah, yes. Yes, Campbell. I wonder how I'll find him. In time, Takin, all questions are answered. No. No, you're wrong. Some questions are never answered, and maybe that's just as well. Spoken like man of wisdom. Enlightenment. <laughs> Very little of either this morning, Mumba. It, it is morning, isn't it? Sun warm and new. Like Mungba, has much to learn before he dies. We all do. To beg pardon, Takin, Hmm? some more than others. People of village are in their hearts good people, but wisdom to them new and fears old. Uh, Yes, so I understand, but what is... People of village require patience. Leader who shows patience and no fear can bring my people to enlightenment, away from superstitions and ancient religious teachings. Oh, Oh, you've got the wrong idea. I have not come to lead your people any more than Campbell did. Now, understand, I've come only to get data on the ancient shrines and pagodas nearby and to help your esteemed friend Campbell. Takin to see many past glories of Pugan, but, I beg pardon, villagers of Pugan... Also there. The village, when we reached it, was somewhat inland from the river port of Pugan proper. Wood and bamboo huts lined the four sides of a square that served as a compound. A pack of wild dogs swarmed ahead of us, yapping a signal to the groups of villagers bunched together near a central hut. Mung Ba raised his hand in greeting. After a moment of frozen silence, the villagers turned and ran. They run from us. Something very wrong. Not much of a welcome. Must walk ahead to hut of esteemed friend. Must smile, show no fear. Come, Takin. I fixed the smile on my face that Mung Ba ordered, and I followed him. If I showed no fear, it was not because I felt none. There wasn't a soul in sight, but my back straightened rigid with the feel of a hundred eyes upon it. Mang Ba's steps slowed at the sound of the bell, his head cocked slightly to one side as if to listen. We walked on slowly now, until we came to the central hut. There, Mang Ba stopped cold. No. No, not so. What? What is it? What's wrong? The evil eye, it has come. The evil eye. You are listening to Eye of Evil, tonight's presentation of Escape. Each week, CBS Radio issues an invitation to go on the prowl in a real squad car. You'll hear the stories of real witnesses in real cases as you join us on CBS Radio's Night Watch. It's unusual, thoroughly factual, and thoroughly exciting. Night Watch, every week on most of these same stations. 
And now, Escape and the second act of Eye of Evil. Mangba had disappeared as quickly and completely as the others fled in terror from a crude sign I could not understand at the door of the central hut. The temple bells tolled ominously as I walked inside, not knowing what to expect. Mangba had called this Campbell's hut, but there was no one inside, only the strange signs and symbols affixed to everything in sight. I wanted to run too, desperately, but something told me that if I were safe at all, I was safer inside the hut. As the silent day wore on, I found many of Campbell's papers. Garbled and strange, they were a chronicle of the steady deterioration of a man. When I finally put them down, it was night. Tuck in, tuck in, Mumba falls before you. Are you hurt? Only with hurt of shame, tuck in. And get up. When duly forgiven. I said get up and tell me what this madness is all about, these signs. This poppycock about the evil eye. Mungba, upon seeing the signs of evil eye, forgot his enlightenment. Oh. Did you find out about Campbell? He is said to be possessed. And that accounts for these signs? Signs are charm to evil eye. Take away power. So say my people. Y- your people are insane. Only frightened, Takin. Look. C- can't you talk to them, reason with them, tell them they have nothing to fear, that even if they did these... Obscene charms of theirs are no answer. Not Mungba. Takin must do. Me? That's ridiculous. To say again, Takin must do. The evil eye is on this house. Only Takin can prove this is not so. So say my people. But but how? Tomorrow, Takin, look upon chosen one. If chosen one not die, spell of evil eye broken. If chosen one die, not good. Oh, of all the idiotic... To beg pardon. To do this only way to save esteemed friend and self. There was no sleep. The Pagan night spent itself slowly, weirdly, washed in moonlight and filled with strange sounds. The paddy birds, the barking deer the cries of wild cattle, and and always, always the eerie toll of the temple bells. I could feel it building in me, a fusion of strangeness, a fear, a fear that was somehow compelling. Drawn to an opening at the back of Campbell's hut, I looked out. And there I saw a moonlight fantasy. In a clearing before an ancient pagoda, a single dancer performed. And then... Somehow I was outside the hut, walking slowly across the compound. No, Takin, no! Get out of my way. Hear me, hear, hear, Mumba. You must not answer the call of the temple bells. Stand aside. To follow is to die. I tried to free myself from Mumba's grip. I could not. And if the dancer danced on, and if the bells tolled longer, I don't know. Because suddenly the night was black and silent, and the madness was gone. You know, each night I don't know how I got to bed, yet every morning I find you here. Takin, sleep well? Like I was hit on the head... Mungba, was there really a dancer out there last Mungba, night? Mungba, fix tea, Takin, feel fine. <laughs> was there a dancer? What has gone before belongs to the night, no longer to us. I don't understand your bloody country, Mungba, or even you. I am pleased to be a simple man. You've saved my life twice now. Why? Takin, Mungba, friend. Life of friend, more precious than own life. Mungba... What happened to me last night? What happened to Campbell before I got here? Mumba, not know. Fix tea, Takin, feel fine. 
Everything here plays on your feelings, your emotions, the cries of the animals, the tolling of the bells, the sight of ruin after ruin, pagodas and shrines in crumbling decay. Is that it? Does the very decay here hold the power to degenerate a man? Oh, temple bell again. Hour has come, Takin. What hour? Before bright sun and my people, Takin, look upon chosen one. Only way to save esteemed friend and self. Outside, the villagers lined the compound. Some wore coverings over their entire heads. Others, with the same fear that I might possess the evil eye, hid their faces from my view. All of them, so far as I could see, wore signs and symbols as charms against my spell. Oh, it was madness. All of it. Madness. Takin, ready? Just tell me what I'm supposed to do. Chosen one will walk to center of clearing. Yeah. Temple bells will stop. That becomes signal for Takin to look for first time upon chosen one. When the bells stop. Yes, all right. Now, let's get on with it. Kindly turn back, Takin. All right. I'll have to make quick work of it. Takin, have nothing to fear. My heart very nearly stopped with the bells. Slowly, I turned around to look upon the chosen one. He stood proudly straight, smiling confidently at me. My little Burmese friend, Mungba. And I looked and smiled and watched him fall. <laughs> Mungba! Mungba! Mumba, how, how in heaven's name? Uh, not talking, esteemed friend. Campbell, he... Campbell? Mm. Poor wretched devil. Mumba was dead, and I was alone. I started to lift him to carry him back to the hut and... Then I saw the thin arrow in his back, a blowgun. I looked up in the direction the arrow must have come, and there it was. The ancient pagoda where the dancer had been the night before. It was also the direction of the temple bells. And this time, without anyone to stop me, I walked into the ruins of the temple. Campbell! Campbell, where are you? I'll find you, you know, Campbell. Campbell? Over here, Loring. I can't see you. In these shadows. I'm here in the dark, and you can hear me. If your eyes fail you, follow your ears. Why did you do it, Campbell? He worshipped you. Why did you have to kill Mungba? Mungba? Cowering in the darkness won't help you, Campbell. There's a window down there. Why don't you stand proudly in the bright sunlight, as he did? Mungba died proudly. How very gallant. You are mad. Come here. Here to the light. Here now. Stand there and tell... Campbell. Are we at the window now, Loring? Campbell. You, you're blind. Do I stand proudly in the bright sunlight? What happened to you? Who did this to you? I shall fail if where I look, my eyes see no beauty. Oh, Campbell. We didn't understand in your letter. None of us understood. Tell me. Who did that to your eyes? Where one sees no beauty, no good, one sees evil. And once the eye becomes absorbed with evil, it is said, the eye must no longer see. Campbell, listen to me. We'll go now, you and I. I'll take you home. I am home. No, no, no. We'll go to England. Now. 
together. Do you understand me? You don't understand me. I want to be here. I must be here. But why? Why? This place is strange and terrifying. And beautiful, Loring. But you... You must go before you see its beauty... Before it draws you and holds you and never lets you go. There is no beauty here. Have you not seen our beauty, Stephen Loring? Gina! Have you not watched the dancer by moonlight and felt compelled to follow her? Go, Loring, go now. It's not too late for you. Campbell, did Gina... Did she do this to you? Go, Loring, while you can. You... We're supposed to die in Mandalay, Stephen. You tried to have me killed. My people are happy as they are. Believe me, Loring, and go now. Too late is very soon upon you. I'll go. I've had my fill of this madness. Is it madness? Are you sure? You must be very sure. It might be madness. Or again, it might be a feeling, a mystic something that has been known to take hold of men. I ran, hard and fast, from the ancient pagoda, away from China, away from Campbell. Through the compound I ran, toward Pugan and the river, and freedom. And when the river was in sight, my, my legs became heavy. Leaden. And in my mind, I knew I would run as far into the world as I could. But I also knew that someday I would have to come back. Under the direction of Norman MacDonald, Escape has brought you Eye of Evil by Kathleen Height, starring John Daner. Featured in the cast were Lynn Allen and Jack Crucian with Parley Bear and Ben Wright. Your announcer, George Walsh. The special music for Escape is composed and conducted by Leith Stevens. Next week. You are adrift in a small boat somewhere in the English Channel, the fog lying heavy on the greasy moving waters, while in the dark ahead of you moving through the war-torn night towards you is a thread of death from which there may be no escape. So listen next week when Escape brings you David Devine's story, Flood on the Goodwinds. This coming Monday night on CBS Radio's Gunsmoke, you'll discover, along with United States Marshal Matt Dillon, that the problems facing a U.S. Marshal of the Old West were just as vital and real as those facing law enforcement officers today. Remember, Monday nights on most of these same stations, CBS Radio presents realistic Western thrills on Gunsmoke. This is the CBS Radio Network.